Hello, hello, and welcome to another video with the Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible Study video channel. Today's video will be a part two to a video that was done entitled No Other God. Have no other God before our Heavenly Father is what the God of Heaven decreed and declared that we are to not have any idols before Him. So our first reading is going to start the, in the first book that the Holy Spirit led me over into, which is Exodus chapter 20. And uh, on uh, the first video we did, we went over the same chapter, the same chapter and these same verses. But we're just going to elaborate a little more on it today as the Holy Spirit led me to do. So uh, starting with verse 1 in Exodus chapter 20. Uh, God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Now, that's just like those that are birthed into the kingdom today. The saints of God in the kingdom today, you've been taken out of darkness and brought into that marvelous light, the marvelous light of the Heavenly Father. And so he's saying that he's saying that to us in the New Testament. And he also said that to the children of Israel in the Old Testament, which we're reading right now. And he says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Okay, same thing he said to them. He also said to the saints of God today. It's part of the, the commandments that he first gave to Moses to give to the children of Israel. And then verse 4 says, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the, wa under the, under the earth. Okay, so thou shalt not bow down. Uh, bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy God, I'm a jealous God, he says, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation, okay, um, of them that hate him, he says, because whenever an individual begins to serve another God, they have decreed and declared they don't want God to be their God. Some doing it unwillingly, unknowingly that that's what uh, they're doing, but and still praising God, the God of heaven, but they're serving another God in their heart. Okay, so then he says here, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. For thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that takes his name in vain. Takes his name and uses it other than what purpose it is to be used for. And that is for the kingdom of heaven. Using it for vanity, any type of vanity, he's saying. Uh, any service not other than the service of the Holy Spirit, uh, not other than the service of the kingdom of God to edify it, build it up, to bring it forth into the land. Okay, so that's what he means by that. So the particular verse that we're going to stick to with this part two of uh, No Other God is going to be verse number five. No, verse number four. Sorry about that. He says, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above. That's the particular statement we want to focus in on. Um, as the Holy Spirit led me into this uh, revelation to talk about it, I'm going to also share a dream that I have, I have had in reference to uh, an individual uh, that I once worked with. I'm not going to give names or anything like that, but that individual was working with a guy, uh, one of the, well, one of the gods of another type. Well, a god under God, because God also calls us gods too. Okay, so but this particular god was the god uh, Alethea. Alethea was the name of that god. It's a Greek goddess, and she's known as the goddess of truth. A vision, um, again, that the heavenly Father gave me in reference to others in the earth worshiping other types of gods or goddesses. Now, understanding that God made those gods also, and he called them gods, and he called them goddesses, just like he calls us gods. Now, we're going to take a look at that in one of the Old Testament books, again, Exodus, chapter 28. We can see where God also told the children of Israel chapter 28 in Exodus, starting with uh, verse 42, it says, And thou shalt make them like breeches to cover their nakedness, from the loins even unto thy thighs they shall reach. 
And there shall be upon Aaron and upon his sons when they come in unto the tabernacle of the congregation, or when they come near unto the altar to minister in the holy place, that they bear not iniquity and die. It shall be a statue forever unto him and his seed after him. Now, I went ahead and read this because this is a part of the revelation, but this is in reference to whenever an individual is serving another God, has begun to worship and bow down to any other God that is a part of heaven that God has created. It places them in a position of nakedness before God because the original garment God gave to the saints of God in the earth today is the garment of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. So whenever you begin to serve another God, Okay, that God does not have the Holy Spirit. That God does not have the garment of God. You go into, that individual then begins to go into defilement, okay? Because they're uh, basically having a relationship with another God, fornicating. They're, they're defiling themselves with another God, which is what God tells us not to do. So then another scripture I'm led to is going to be in the, the book of Psalms. Now, Psalms, I'm going to read this. This is Psalm 82. And he tells us here, because we're going to take a look even further and deeper into gods and goddesses. Okay, we want to make sure we understand that because that's what our revelation is today, how individuals may sometimes serve gods and goddesses. And God created and made gods and goddesses. Okay. And uh, Psalm 82 says, God stands in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. So see here, he judges amongst the gods because because he created he created them, just as he calls us gods. He says, "How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? So defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy and rid them out of the hand of the wicked. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness." All the foundations of the earth are, of course, out of course. For I have said, you are gods. Again, all of you are children of the Most High. Now, see how he tells us there? But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. So arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. I just wanted to read that full psalm. But the verses that we king in on are the verses where he tells us that we are gods. In verse 6, I have said, you are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High, okay? So those gods and those goddesses are under the God of heaven. So another scripture, we can take a look at that more in depth, is in the New Testament, in the book of John. It's going to be John chapter 10. In the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and Jesus Christ even taps into that what the Heavenly Father said in reference to those who come into the kingdom are referred to as gods. Okay, chapter 10, verse 34. So Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said, you are gods? So if, if he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, then so are you born into this kingdom up under Christ Jesus, also known as gods. Now, the gods that I'm speaking of, that this individual was, uh, that I saw in a vision, was the god Aletheia. Let me make sure I'm saying her. Yeah, Aletheia. She's a Greek goddess, okay? And so, um, in the specific vision, the individual was worshiping that god and not the god of heaven. And another scripture that goes along with that would be also in the New Testament, in the book of Romans, chapter 1, where God tells us, let's go to it, because he forewarns us of doing that type of thing. Because in doing it, you're worshiping the creature, who is, who, just like it would be one of us, who he has created instead of the creator, whom he is that created the creature, the angels and the gods. So then he says, uh, and that's all in chapter one, the book of Romans. Now, verse seven, I'll tap into this. He says, to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God, our father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And then I'm going to skip verses. I'm going to go over to verse 18. 
for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who know the truth. They know it in righteousness because, again, he's talking to the saints just like he's talking to us because we're saints of God in the kingdom. But he's talking to the Roman saints in this book, but it's also in reference to those in the kingdom. So it would be for referring to us also. So he says here in um, chapter 25, skipping verses again, he says, now this goes into telling you specifically how, just what I just said, how he says, who changed the truth of God into a lie and they worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Okay. So in individuals that begin to go forward with that, the wrath of God, he's saying, can be poured out from heaven upon them because in doing so once god has called you into his kingdom to be a part of his kingdom and you decide to go and serve one of the gods or the goddesses up under the kingdom then you're uh re you're in rebellion because he tells us not to do that we're to have no other god before him so that's taking a look here again at in individuals that may have gotten into serving gods or goddesses and one of the specific goddesses that was uh, noted for me to make reference to on this video was the goddess Alethea the goddess and she's known as the goddess of truth now again God created all the goddesses and they have their own specific power just like um, many today you know who are under Christ Jesus we have the power of Christ Jesus Okay, and which is the power of heaven. Well, these specific specific gods and goddesses, they are known by other types of powers, but it is still the same power of heaven. But they're using and have access into that particular power. Like she's saying she's the God of truth. Well, God is the God of truth. And Holy Spirit says he is the truth. He will lead you and guide you into all truth. Okay, so why would one want to begin to worship one of the deities? Okay, that was created by heaven, just like your deity that was created by heaven also. And of course, that would also fall into alignment with anyone uh, that would begin to. That would also fall into alignment with one that may be worshiping, let's say, a leader, a leader of, of a congregation, because that particular leader is a god or it may be a goddess. But we're not to worship that particular individual but the holy spirit that operates through that individual but in in doing so you would fall into the same category that he's speaking of thou shalt not worship any other god before me so that is i do believe going to bring us to the conclusion of this particular revelation uh, no other god before me and uh, with reference to worshiping gods and goddesses and how God is the creator of those creatures, he calls them. And um, just like he created us, and we're not to be worshipped. All right, only he is to be worshipped and known to be our God, and no other God placed in reverence above him. All right, so that concludes No Other God Part 2. God bless you. God be with you, and I will see you on our next Bible study. As we continue to go forward with the Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible Study video channel.